So you finally got a chance to see Felipe Franks throw in person. I was curious how that looked and, and how everybody how everybody looked in the in the walkthrough stuff. Yeah, it wasn't disappointing. Um, now we haven't been able to do that 11 on 11. We've had some individual where we've been able to throw um, and work some drills. Uh, but yeah, did not disappoint at all. I, you know, watching him on tape, I figured he was going to have a real live arm, and he does. Thing I've been impressed with is just how he's been able to get the ball out of his hand, and uh, just really consistent with all of his throws. So, um, not a lot of wobbling the ball. I think uh, I think he's going to be really, really sharp once we get going um, on Monday. So, excited to see him and and the rest of the guys. Um, I've been very pleased with with all the quarterbacks. Uh, watching them throw because it was uh, been a long time being able to see that. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Bob. Uh, hey, 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 Kendall, how you doing? Good, Bob. How are you? I'm good. Hey, as far as the other quarterbacks, how, how's KJ doing? Uh, how healthy? I mean, do you feel like he's 100? percent And then with Malik, um, what what do you look? I know he's a true freshman. But how, how's he done the walkthroughs? What what are you looking for out out of Malik? Yeah, KJ, uh, he, he's healthy, um, looks really good. He rehabbed uh, back home uh, during most of the time when we were quarantined. And um, he, he uh, has said that his shoulder hasn't bothered him at all. He feels really good. Uh, all of his movement skills appear to be really good. Uh, his throwing motion has not in, impaired him at all in that way. So um, I, th I think he's full go. Um, Malik, Malik's head's spinning just a little bit. Um, knew it would be. and. To be honest, Bob, we've put quite a bit on them, and um, that's that's kind of by design. We've wanted to basically make them fail. We wanted to put a lot of information on them. Uh, that way, they've seen it, and then once we, uh, you know, bring the information back up uh, schematically, then at least they've seen it. So his head's been spinning a little bit, but his want to is there, so that's a big part of it. Hutch. Yeah, Coach, I was wondering, going into camp, I mean, how, how much do you think you've got your offense, how much of it has been installed, and how much you're confident in uh, just going into camp percentage-wise? Yeah, we're, we probably got about 75% in. We're going to dial back just a little bit first week. Uh, but we, we've already had some of the guys that are getting some static. I don't know. He's a mute. But, uh, yeah, we, could, we feel good about what we have in it. Like I said, probably 75%. And we'll be able to, to keep moving forward from that. Uh, so feel really good about what we've got in. And, um, you know, as we continue to go and assess the personnel and figure out what guys do well, um, that'll determine, you know, how much more that we decide to do. Um. Hey, Kendall. Everything is so different about this year. I'm wondering how you feel about how prepared you, you guys are and what you've done so far. And then the questions that you want to see answered the first couple of weeks, the things that you're looking to get answered. Yeah, Tom, I mean, obviously for, for everybody, whether it's us in sports or business, it's just been different. Um, we're doing this Zoom call right now. So, um, you know, I feel like where we're at, I feel really good um, and the retention that our, our players have. Uh, I've talked earlier about you know, Malik and his want to. I think that's one of the biggest things that I see from this football team is they're eager to do right. They're eager to please. They want to learn. They want to get better. Um, they're easy to coach because they're they're wanting to be successful. And, um, you know, we're going to help them and allow them to do that. And um, what was the second part of your question? Just the things that you're going to be looking for the, and questions that you want to see answered as Cam. Yeah. There's a lot. You know, we haven't put a ball in the air yet. So, um there's so many things that come with that. Ball protection is, is going to be number one. Uh, that's going to be the biggest thing that we're going to have to make sure that we're, we're preaching as coaches and our, our players are going to police it themselves. Um, but that's going to be the biggest thing is, you know, right now there's, there's really no contact with the walkthrough. There's really no high speed collisions. We won't have that the first week, but um, that's going to be the biggest thing is just is being able to execute once, you know, there are, some repercussions to what you're doing. You know, right now you can kind of run freely and know that nothing's going to happen to you. That changes. And the guys have been doing it their whole life. But uh, when you hadn't done it for a while, then, you know, it may take a little bit. So that's the biggest thing is just making sure that we're able to protect the football. Um, I feel like our tempo and, and how we want to um, mechanically be on offense, I think we're right where we need to be right now. I don't think, you know, I don't think any of us, our entire coaching staff would say that, that 
Um, we didn't get spring balls, so we feel behind. Not at all. We've had 19 really good practices. Um, I think Coach Pittman and the leadership he's given us as coaches um, and put together a schedule to have these walks and the way we've done it with our meeting time, taking advantage of all the time that we've been allotted uh, has been excellent. So um, he, he's done a great job, and we have great coaches, and we're all ready for Monday. Thanks, Kendall. Mm -hmm. Nate? Nate. Kendall, as far as tight ends concerned, when you move tall, what have you seen from there when, since you moved him back to defense? What have you seen from that position and, and what kind of depth are you developing? I think we got good tight ends. Um, yeah, obviously, just best thing for the team, we moved Blaine back over and he's looked really good, which we, we knew he would. Um, but I feel good about the guys in that room. Uh, Kern and, and Henry, those guys have done a good job. And then uh, Bax is another player that we have that's, that's done a good job there. Um, I think we have good depth at that position. We got to continue to, you know, evaluate the physicality. And that's, that's going to be the whole thing is the, all the walkthroughs, you can see where guys fit and make sure they're, you know, somewhat executing. But it really, it really determines once you put on pads and you're able to do it and do it in a physical manner. So that's when you're going to be able to see if guys are going to be able to hold gaps or move people. And so that's going to be the biggest deal is once we're able to get in pads and evaluate those guys, we'll, we'll see who separates. Nikki. Coach, um, your running backs, not including Rakeem Boyd, like what are you looking for from the guy who ends up, you know, backing him up? Like what kind of complementary skills or what are you, what are you seeing from those guys behind him? Yeah, I've, I've been pleased with the running backs. Um, and I know you're not asking about Rakeem, but from a leadership standpoint, he's been unbelievable. Um, he's been really, really good, not just with the running back room or offense. He's been just a great teammate overall. So can't can't say enough good things about Rakeem and how he's been. Um, you know, production, taking care of the football, pass protection, all those things, being able to tell a line and, you know, play at tempo and play at a high level where the quarterback's not always having to – tell the guy what to do because in our offense that happens a lot uh the signals come in a hurry quarterbacks got to react running backs got to get signals in a line and um Traylon Smith's done a tremendous job back there I think we got a host of guys Oglesby's going to help us at the running back position um we feel like uh Spivey TJ Hammond's kind of going back and forth um he's he's looked good at receiver so you know we'll see we'll see how it shakes out you know hopefully we can keep all those guys healthy we're going to need them Russell Schaap. Coach, you mentioned this or touched on it just a minute ago, but I wanted to get your thoughts on the job Coach Pittman has done with everything that's been thrown at him, you know, this season in year one as being a head coach. Well, you can look at, you know, some of the things we've been able to do from a recruiting standpoint, um, and that's all Coach Pittman. Um, it really is. He's uh, the leadership that he's given our staff, and, and I do feel like um, – we have one of the best staffs in the country, the people, the, the men that are in this building. Um, and obviously he hand selected all those guys and um, he's done a tremendous job. There's not, uh, there's not a formula or a, or a book you can turn to whenever this type of thing happens. And um, you have to go with common sense, common sense and instincts and, and doing what you feel like is, is best to help you, you know, win. And, and that's, that's really all we've done is, is we try to figure out what's the best things for the team, the players first, uh, the staff, and then, you know, make decisions on whether or not we feel like that's going to help us win a game. And um, so I think he's kept it pretty simple. Um, but the thing about him is um, you know what you're getting, and that's what I love about him is the consistency on a daily basis. Um, you know exactly what you're going to get every single day, and uh, you're going to come to work, and you're going to have fun. Um, but you're going to get a lot accomplished because he's going to be, he's going to be there in the staff meetings. He's going to be uh, directing us to do what we need to get accomplished on, on a daily basis. And uh, the thing that I appreciate is, you know, obviously Coach Odom has head coach experience, and um, he's allowed the coordinators, including Coach Fountain, our special teams coordinators, to be very involved in, in all scheduling. And um, he's not just telling everybody exactly what to do. He wants to communicate and make sure we're all doing it right. And um, I think everybody appreciates that. Thanks, Coach. Kyle Nickelbaum. Yeah, Coach, I'm assuming players have definitely come to you with questions about uncertainty. And just curious how you, how you answer those. Uh, which uncertainties? 
on so as far as playing the season, you know, just watching what's going on around the country. I got you. Um, yeah, I mean, every position coach has their position players that are going to have questions. Um, you know, all we can do is is continue to do what the government's allowing us to do. You know, everything that – and that's – I didn't mention that with Coach Pittman and his leadership, but handling the COVID and, the, and really the no-nonsense part of how we've handled it. Uh, you come in this office, anywhere in here, our players are all masked. Coaches are all masked. We wear masks all day. Um, and, I, and I know a lot of other colleagues that are in the same position we are that maybe aren't doing the same. So, I, I, you know, I can't speak enough about Coach Pittman and the leadership he's given us that way. Um, but with the players, you know, we feel like this is the safest place you can be. Um, you know, we've every, – everything that we can do to make it as safe as you can, uh, we've done it. Dave, uh, our trainer, I think it's Pulaski, uh, he's done a tremendous job um, every single day giving us updates on, on all the players and what we're doing um, from a medical standpoint as well. And those players are going to him as well. And, um, you know, we've – I think we've done a tremendous job and it started with Coach Pittman. Hey, uh, Coach Browns, uh with uh, your receivers, do you have the kind of depth there that you want at this point? I know they're not done a lot yet, but uh, just kind of assess the depth there at receiver. Yeah, Terry, I think we'll find out. Um, this first week, I know they're going to get a lot of reps, uh, and that, that's by design. We want to make sure that, that everybody's getting reps, everybody's getting to get on the field and, and be able to prove themselves. Um, so those guys are going to get worn out. They better find a cold tub quick because they're going to need it. Um, but I think our our top level guys, first five to six guys, I think can be can be really explosive. Um, and then we're going to have to just keep developing uh, some of the younger guys and get them where they need to be. But I do think that is a very good group. I think it's a strong group for us offensively. Uh, we've got some really good leaders in there. Um, Trey Knox, Mike Woods, Traylon Burks, those guys are, are really strong leaders in that group. And um, I'm excited to watch them. You know, we can see them run around and stop and act like they're catching a the ball, but I want to see them catch it. And I want to see our quarterbacks throw it. So we're all excited for that. On average, how many receivers do you generally play in a game? Uh, I know it probably varies a little bit, but what, how many guys should go in expecting to play? Yeah, I mean, it, it all depends. And it, and it also depends on how we feel about our tight ends, you know, formationally, what we want to be in. If we feel like, you know, we got a stronger tight end group than receiver group, then we may need more 12 personnel with only two receivers on the field. If we feel really strong about our receivers and maybe not so much about the tight ends, then we may be in four receiver sets. So that, that kind of depends on once we get on the field and we're able to determine what exactly what we have. Um, typically, you're going to see probably about five guys play a game. Um, and, and some of those will be in limited roles. Most of the time, you're going to have three guys that will get the, the majority of the snaps. We've got time for two more. Mike, Irwin. Coach, if you were to go back decades, really, Arkansas had a, one of the things they had was a history of, of, of not having multiple starting quarterbacks. You'd have a guy three years, two years. There weren't a lot of injuries at quarterback. These last two years have shell-shocked these fans with seven starting quarterbacks in two years. And that's the number one question I get asked is, is that going to stop? So you're the guy that's going to coach these guys. How quickly do you think you can identify a starter, put a guy on the field, and keep him on the field at quarterback? Uh, you know, I think it's going to take a couple weeks to, to figure out exactly um, which guy that we feel like can lead us to victories. Um, you know, you got to get in the fire. You got to go in scrimmages, and obviously we're going to protect our quarterback, so um, they're not going to get hit. But we've got – We've got some guys like Felipe who have game experience and and shoot uh, really all of them. You know, Jack and John and KJ, all those guys have played. So uh, that doesn't bother me. Um, as far as identifying, you know, I don't think there's a set time when you do it. I think it's a feel. I think it's a feel with myself and Coach Pittman and, and frankly, the, the entire staff. And, you know, everybody's got to have a feel for the guy who's going to be touching the ball every single play. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm the person who's going to make that decision. I want us all to feel good about it. Um, you know, I feel like I'm going to have probably a pretty strong opinion. Um, but um, hopefully Felipe will, will be what we think he is. And, you know, there's still going to be competition, but he, I'd say it's going to be his job to lose. Tom, you want to wrap us up? Hey, 
That'd be great. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, we've heard Sam talk about the O-line, some body changes, some added weight. What are your thoughts about what you've seen from the O-line and the depth you might be able to create there? Yeah, well, getting all these reps with these practices that we've had has really helped us. Um, schematically, being able to film it all, coach it all. Um, coach Davis does a tremendous job. Obviously, Coach Pittman, um, he's going to be having a, an eagle eye on the offensive line. Uh, since that's what he's watched his entire life. I feel like we got some really good players right there. Um, Coach Walker, our shrink staff, has done an awesome job. You can tell from January to where we're at right now, these guys have changed physically. Um, I think they've, they've slimmed up and put on some muscle mass. They look good. I feel like our energy levels are really good at that position as well. Um, we've got good players. Um, you know, now we just got to go out and, and see how physical we can be. And, you know, Barry, they do a lot of stuff on defense and they're going to make it hard on us. So we're going to have to be able to, to be able to come to work every single day and know exactly what we're getting into because he, he does a great job. But um, I feel like the depth at that position, I think we'll have 10 guys that we feel really good about.